to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. I'm curious, I have a few questions for you. What is your passion? I mean, why are you in this business exactly? And what are the truths you hold yourself up to? Now, these may seem like heavy questions, and especially if you're listening at the crack of dawn on your run or your walk. And it's okay if you don't have the answers right now. But I encourage you to think about these questions because recognizing your whys and knowing your truths will not only help you get through the day, but it will help you define your success. And in defining our success, that's how we reach our goals. Now, my guest today has dug deep into these questions, and she is here to tell us all about it. Lindy Galloway is the founder and chief creative officer of Lindy Galloway Studio and Shop, an interior design studio and team in Orange County, California. They serve an exclusive list of clientele across the U.S. In 2019, Lindy was thoroughly enjoying her success and the business she had built, but she found herself wanting more. Not more money, more stuff, more fame. No, nothing like that. Instead, Lindy wanted something more meaningful. She explored this and discovered she wanted to do something good for others through her business. This led her to launch an e-commerce shop with her husband, Wynn, in 2020. The Lindy Galloway shop offers her signature California-style home furnishings and decor, along with her growing Design by Lindy collection. And it's really terrific because it gives everyone a chance to have a little bit of Lindy in their life. And who doesn't want that? But this isn't your average online retail site. Through her Create Beauty, Give Beauty campaign, a portion of all the profits from the Lindy Galloway shop are given back to communities worldwide. Now, I'm not going to tell you any more because I'm very delighted to let you know that Lindy's here to tell us all about it. Hi, Lindy. Thanks for coming to A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. So, Lindy, it's interesting because we've had such a fun time. I have, anyway, getting to know you the last while. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Almost, almost ran out of recording time left. It was here entertaining, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing is, there's lots of things that we could talk about with you. I, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I look at what your platform and your business and all the things that you've created, and um, I decided to just just really discipline myself and narrow it into talking about your shop and your e-commerce site, because I do know from my own personal experience, lots of interior designers, you know, are, are thinking about this, talking about this, um, you know, investigating it. And Mm -hmm. I also know that there's a lot more that meets the eye that, there is the difference between having a beautiful landing page with some items on it that you've picked and curated from a couple of sources than approaching it as a full on true business model. And I know from what you've accomplished and what I see that the second is the truth for you. And so Mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about that, how you feel about that. Yeah. I mean, I think that what I see in the industry is there's a lot of shops popping up and we are one of them. We started ours in 2020 and it was kind of at the cusp of when, you know, a lot of vendors were becoming more open to people having e-com and now here we are, you know, 2023 and there is a plethora of them out there. And so I think the difference becomes how are you standing out? 
How are you offering something different? And how are you leveraging this in a way that is actually going to make you money? I mean, I do think a lot of people think, oh, I just want to create an online shop because it's passive income. Um, you know, <laughs> I can tell you from the last three years, it's definitely not passive, <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything but. But of course, the goal is that one day, you know, it's more of its own well-oiled machine and there's huge benefits to that. But if I think that there's a difference that you really have to create a, um, a business and an angle, uh, out of it to, to, you know, really reach success with it. Okay. And so I, and I love that, right? Basically when you said to create a business and create an angle, like those, what that just says to me is definitely approach it as a business, clearly simple, straight fat forward. Yep. But the angle is it's your why, right? Like why mm-hmm. you, why is your shop going to be a important to you? Why is it going to be important to somebody else? That's like the angle. Would you agree? Totally. Yeah. Okay. So tell us maybe about your why, your angle. What 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 goes into that? Yeah. Okay. So I have two whys. There was the why when it started, and then there's the why that's evolved now. And mm. um, so I started our studio aside eight years ago, and now we service amazing high end clientele. Um, and we were really kind of entering this um niche over the last three years of these high net worth individuals. I mean, you know millions and millions of dollars going into their homes. And we got to be a part of creating these custom designs and something really incredibly beautiful for them. And, you know, celebrities and all the types that we're getting to work with. Now, there was this point in my career, though, where I was feeling this tug of, I enjoy what I'm doing. I love design. I love business. But also what else am I doing in the world for it? Now, am I making pretty homes? You betcha. They're really pretty. Um, Are we rolling out some of our most amazing projects this year? For sure. But what is it that is going to keep me going and keep that drive on a personal level? So for me, starting the shop was actually something that really arrived out of a personal uh, place. So my husband and I were at a conference it's, um, this was back in 2019 at a philanthropic conference and we had a great time. And after someone spoke, I went back to the hotel room and I wrote like a five page business plan, which I think they should Mm. be longer. Um, but but (laughs) I, that afternoon put together, um, a really great business plan. And we were with my family that night because we all went as, um, my whole family. And I sat down and I was telling my parents and my brothers and Wynn, my husband, his name's Wynn. Um, and you know, it's telling them about this idea. And, um, and it started, you know, completely different than how it evolved. I swore on my life that I was going to find women in Santa Ana and teach them how to sew and teach them how to make pottery. And it turns out I don't know how to do either one of those. So <laughs> that was not going to be the path. It's still my husband's favorite thing. He's like, remember when we we're having a cocktail and you're like, I'm going to teach them how to do the most incredible pottery. And he's like, you have no idea how to do that. Um, so <laughs> I was like, YouTube, hello, like use your resources. Um, (laughs) But that definitely wasn't going to be the angle. But what at the core of that was, was that I wanted to somehow find a way to help people. I wanted to be able to create a business that, yes, could serve me and my family and create a lifestyle, but also that could have more meaning. And for me, that was really important in what I was doing. You know, we were in this world that like uh, money is no real object. And I, I trust me, I love being in that world. We get to make amazing designs out of it. But my core, my, my heart was nudging, like, what else could there be? What other thing can I give the world other than pretty homes? So Mm. with that five page business plan, my husband actually was looking for a career change. And so, um, at this dinner, my dad even has this photo. It's so cheesy because we even have badges on and my dad's like a terrible photographer, but he has (laughs) this photo of when and I like standing with our smiles and like my computer of my, like, you know, life changing document. And, um, and it was that moment that we decided that he would shift careers and he would come on to start the shop. And, um, it took a journey of, um, probably about six months to really land on what we were going to do and what that impact was going to be because again, I don't know how to make pottery and I wasn't going to help save, save lives that way. Um, but we ended up deciding that we were going to create a shop that could really enhance people's home that could be at the heartbeat of what I love of design, but that could also give micro loans to those, um, across the world, people that sometimes wow. need 200, even sometimes, honestly, $20 to start a business in their communities. So we're talking like wow. Rwanda, we're talking Uganda, like these little towns that have nothing that literally have shoes made out of tires, but they can make a tremendous impact on their community. So I like feel so passionate when I talk about it. So we'll get back to the shop part. But the point is that 
there was a, an organization that we um, partnered with and they give microloans. So every, a portion of every um, uh, purchase on our shop goes to these microloans. Now, a great story is um, Severa. We actually have a sofa that's, uh, that we named after her and she's a part of their, their program. And she started with a $20 loan and, um, you know, lives in the middle of nowhere in her small community where they have to walk like 20 miles to get water. And, she took this loan and she started with some peanuts and then she opened up from there um, a little peanut stand and she started providing peanuts to the entire community. Well, then that allowed her to start hiring people. And then suddenly her community gets really involved. And now she uh, sells real estate, which is interesting over there, right? It's a different, different than what we think of in America when we think about real estate, but it's everywhere, right? So she now, um, owns and operates that, provides housing for people. She, um, you know, employs over 50 people in her community. And my favorite part is that she started a furniture, uh, furniture shop for her community. So she has these amazing artisans that, um, create all kinds of furniture. And, um, so really the why for me was that my heart was saying, I need something more than what I'm doing. And I, you know, it's not for everybody, but for me, I was like, I need something that I can feel like can impact people here and, and can impact people there. So, wow. Wow. Long story short, that is um, actually long story long. That was the heartbeat <laughs> by um, behind what we were doing. And so once we figured out what it was going to be that we were going to try and make a difference in with these microloans, we, um, we then started curating the shop and it has evolved tremendously over the last three years. Um, and we launched it in 2020, uh, because it was the year of, um, of great decisions, uh, great things happening in the world. It was just the most pleasant time, great right? Timing. <laughs> yeah. In 2020, what a year it was so fun. Um, but it ended up being, you know, really kind of an amazing start for us because when we did launch, you you know, everyone was looking to do something with their home. So we were, mm. it was kind of this vision for us coming to life pretty quickly. Um, and I already had a platform, you know, I already had Instagram. We already had a lot of, you know, people and, uh, and connections via the internet. So that certainly helped, but it was exciting to be able to see some pretty big impact within the first year of business. Wow. That's amazing. I love that story. I mean, Lindy, you know, so what's interesting is, is just give me a few minutes on, you know, the, 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 the going from, I'm going to teach, you know, pottery <laughs> to the shop because like, how do we, cause you have a five page business plan. So was it more just the structure of the give back and the, and the vehicle wasn't set yeah. or you had the five. Okay. Okay. No, it was totally like, I think, and it was naive at the time, right? Because I think I was one of those people that I'm like, we're just going to open up a shop and like sell stuff and it's going to be great. <laughs> um, it was really derived out of, um, you know, hearing people at this conference and what they were doing. And, um, and so that, that was really about like, how can I create something? How can we create something? How can win and I do something that could impact, um, greater. And I knew that the root could be the shop, but I literally had zero clue. Oh, I'm understanding now. In other words, the beginning idea was always the shop. You just thought you were going to teach the local Correct. people yes. and to make the goods for the shop. Correct. And then you were going to do two good things. You were going to have was, these people with yes. a job and a purpose yeah. and then, okay, got it, got it. Got yeah, it. no, I was going to be serving pottery everywhere. It was going to be great. Yes. And yes, it evolved. So that's a good pivot. That's a good pivot. Like, you know, just go and get and buy and sell the goods at market rate and all the things and sell it to people who can afford it at market rate and all the things, but then to give the proceeds, you know, yes. some of the proceeds, ah, well, so, so we, there. we weren't exactly sure like what it was going to be, but we kind of quickly, you know, discovered that the a shop could be the, the main vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. but it took time to figure out exactly what it was, what it was going to look like and how we were going to accomplish it. And then, you know, it's one thing to open up a shop, but it's another thing to figure out how you're going to actually give that nonprofit and how all that's going to work. It was always intended to have an impact and the shop ended up being that vehicle. But initially I was like, okay, maybe we can like, you know, have people make the stuff that we're going to put on there. And ultimately, you know, you got to go through the discovery phase and that discovery phase mm -hmm. led us to realize that that wasn't exactly going to be the, um, the route, but. Well, that's actually yeah. another business too, right? Like, right. It's like, you're going to go, you're actually setting up manufacturing, even though it's yes. individual people in an individual town, like you're now you're getting supplies and you're doing manufacturing and you're, you know, all of that and inventory control and then 
th- then selling it on the on the site, which is a whole nother business yet. So this way you just yeah. buy the stuff from established businesses that are set up for that. Yeah. And I think ultimately, like, you know, we now are um, working with uh, some different furniture makers overseas and they are, you know, we just have um, a couple products that are launching this week and they are all made in Peru um, by these amazing artisans. So I guess I would say it's evolved that way. It's kind of like this full circle moment, right? There's this idea. And then we realize like, oh my gosh, that's a lot to chew off. Like that's a huge bite. Let's start with this. And because we had to learn a lot on the way and we had, yeah. And it's a different animal. You're not, you're not getting things from manufacturers that are already done. You're having to create, you're having to design, you're having to prototype, you're having to figure out supply chain. I mean, it is a whole other animal and it wasn't something we were ready for yet because neither my husband or I had e background at all. So, um, yeah, so there's kind of been like this full circle moment that is really, um, evolved to this year. We have, um, a lot of product launching this year that is, um, kind of with that, uh, you know, approach, but the first couple of years were not that. So I do want to talk about the e-commerce, but you know, yeah. this is where my curiosity makes me crazy. Okay, so okay. I just have one question. <laughs> sure. So the um the um uh nonprofit that you work with it's is it create beauty cre- what is it? So I, create beauty give beauty is yes. our tagline. So the whole emphasis oh. and the whole thing there. So our nonprofit is um is different. That's just like the tagline that we've come up with because it really is about creating oh. beauty in your homes, cre- us creating beauty, but then also being able to um give beauty. So be able to, you know, give um through buying that piece of furniture, you're giving a donation that is mm. now going to create someone's life um totally differently than they could have expected. And so um by us creating beauty, we're also then giving beauty. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And not that we're going to make the show about how does everybody find a nonprofit to work with, but did you just like from that philanthropic yes. conference, that's where you got hooked up with, you know, reputable nonprofits that are like spoke to you, aligned with your mission, vision, yep. values, and that's it. So, exactly. so if we want to know that stuff, we should go find our own research on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because I kind of want to know that stuff, but I'm like, I can't make a whole show out of that. We talk about e-commerce. <laughs> we can, that could be a whole other thing, a whole other <laughs> that's show. That's it. I'm like, you're down yeah. a rabbit hole, Luann. Get back. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can do our own homework. I love that though. I love that. I love, love, love that. Okay. All right. So now back to now it's time to do it. It's time to get to business and launch this e-commerce site. So I think that some of the things that go, the first thing that goes through my mind is what do I don't know that I don't know. Like I'm a, I'm a rational and mm. reasonably intelligent interior designer. I've got trade con- um, contacts. Uh-huh. I've got, maybe I've got a shop, even an actual physical retail shop, or maybe I don't, it doesn't matter, but I've been around the bush a time or two. So I'm, I get how the lay of the land is, but what would you say to me if I'm sitting with you at an IDS meeting and I say, oh, I'm, I'm launching a shop too. I've so far have three candlesticks and a tray <laughs> on my site. Like yes. I'm not making money. Anybody has three candlesticks and a tray. I'm literally saying, what do we not know that we don't know yet? Yeah, no, that's such a great question. And, um, I feel like you described me in the beginning. Remember how I was going to teach people how to make pottery and then I was going to sell it on the shop. I mean, that <laughs> right. was, we've all been I, there. Right? I was At that person. Point, right. Totally, totally. Um, you yeah. know, I think that as a designer and as a creative, I was like, oh, this is such an avenue. This aligns with my avenues, aligns with what I do. This is my lane. It's creative. And then you go, oh my gosh, there's so much on the back end. And that is where Q Win, my husband, um, who also, <laughs> by the way, if you Google my name, it's a little different now. Um, but if you Google my name for like years, it was, um, who is <laughs> Lindy Galloway husband is this <laughs> search engine. He's a very, it's a very handsome individual, but that was literally, I was like, oh my gosh, that cannot be my claim to fame. It's different now. Lindy Galloway net worth, Lindy Galloway, uh, studio, Lindy Galloway clients. You know, there's a plethora of things that he still is on the list, but, um, but anyways, so, <laughs> um, but he, uh, you know, he came into it also not knowing what we don't know. Um, he has a background in real estate. So there was some crossover, there was some ease to that. Um, but neither of us knew what it would take to open an e-com shop. So honestly, he just got down to business. And I think that, um, what we don't know is that as creatives, we have these ideas and we're like, you know, writing a five page business plan after this conference and you're so inspired. (laughs) And then it's like, oh my gosh, you actually have to do it. And doing it is not just curating these pieces that you've seen at market, or it's not, you know, designing a piece. It's, it is so much more than that. And, um, you know, it's, it's also another full circle moment because before I started interior design, I was like, what if I design furniture? And then I realized it was going to be incredibly difficult, but I have this like notebook 
I don't have any more because I'm a min- minimalist. So I like toss everything, which is really mm. unfortunate because this would have been such a good story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> having this would have been the best uh, Instagram post. But um, but I was like drawing in this little notebook, like little, you know, sketches and things. And this was years ago. And then now here we are and I'm still doing, you know, sketches of furniture. But the actual like getting it from your notebook to completion is completely different and is an incredibly long process and has a million steps. And so like, for instance, right now we're already on our spring collection for 24 because we need it to arrive in the next handful of months so that we can get it shot and then launch it. You know, there's so many aspects that go into it. And so I think what you don't know is that the logistics are going to be a heavy lift and logistics are going to uh, be something we're going to need a lot of support in. You can be the creative and you can be doing that, but there is no way that I could run our studio with our, you know, high uh, end clients and run a shop with the logistics. It takes a Mm. team, you know, we have a team. So Wynn runs all of that um, with the team and, um, and we have a lot of crossover now. So when he came on, on, uh, for the shop to start it initially. And, um, and then we found there was a lot of, um, crossover in our, uh, diff- well, I guess I wouldn't say crossover with that. We had different skill sets that offered different things to each other. And so now he runs the business side and I run the creative and, um, yeah, I would just say like preparing yourself to know that there's going to be so many logistics involved and, um, and allowing that to be okay on the journey. I think sometimes as designers too, we're just like, Oh, let's get it out there. And yeah. it just is going to require more. So is it in the beginning? No, no, not at all. Is it, is it in the beginning? Like I'm recalling Megan Moulton's episode and I'm pretty sure that she said to me in the beginning, they would take the orders. They would order the product. They would receive the product. They would turn around and package and box the product and send it back out. And I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what she said. Yeah. Um, And then now of course she's got a warehouse where, you know, all the receiving and all the things that are happening. But like, did you do that? Did you start in the beginning with like, it's coming to our office and four vases have to go out. Let's send them out. (laughs) Yeah. You know, we were in a position within our company to be able to invest into the shop side. So I think that's a big thing too. It's like big difference, a big difference. You know, we had already built this, you know, uh, successful company that had, that was easier to, you know, to build yep. out some of the other financially. Right. So, um, we got a warehouse right away. Now, you know, we are in Newport beach, Newport beach is not where you want a warehouse. So we go inland and where right. it's like a buck a square right. foot, you know, and we yep. have our studio that is in Costa Mesa right next to Newport and it's beautiful. And that's where we have our clients, but our everything shop related is, um, in our warehouse. And so, um, we actually started subleasing this where, uh, this warehouse and now we have the warehouse and, um, we do, we, it's kind of, it's kind of grown and evolved. So when I first started, when we first started the shop, we relied on a lot of drop ship vendors. So, um, think like four hands and pallet check and things like that. So an order comes in, uh, for like the big, for like, say a furniture item, the order comes mm. in, we process it to them. At least I think, I think that's how it happens. I don't know. Our team handles all <laughs> I'm like, let's not, let's not get too in the way. I I don't know. All the magic happens back there. Uh, Yeah. Diana (laughs) does something. Mary Alley does something else. (laughs) Exactly. And they all make it happen. Um, but basically then four hands ships it out. So you never have to even touch the, um, you know, the piece of furniture you do have to, you have to, you know, deal with the customer service and all that side of things. Um, But with accessories and small items, we have all of that shipped to our warehouse and then we fulfill it from our warehouse. Now that we are getting into a lot more of our own pieces, which is something we can definitely talk about, we are now warehousing because we're getting a, you know, ton of containers of furniture and, you know, it's things that we are creating and it's not things from, um, from vendors. So that now we are evolving a warehouse to be a fulfillment center for those things. Um, yeah, so it's kind of you know, you start one way and then you kind of evolve. But I also know people that have started with like their studio or their garage. Um, But we were in a position to be able to kind of set up a little bit differently for that. Okay. And when you say we're in the space now where you're starting to create, so you're, you're going out and do, you're, you're designing a piece and you're finding someone either in or out of the States that is producing this piece for you. It's for your product line and it's not available to other people. Correct. So in my life, everything I've done, my husband always says this to you, I like to do the hard things. Um, I'm like, why? <laughs> like Google is like, go here, here, this is the way are you going to go A to B? And I'm like, let's throw in a C and a stop at Taco Bell. Like, let's do it. You know? So, um, this is one of those moments where it's like, gosh, it's the hard thing, but it is so 
the thing that I'm most passionate about right now. Um, so, you know, as we started to assess what was happening with our shop, we started to realize that, you know, as more and more shops were popping up, we were the same. It didn't really matter. We could run a 20% off sale and they're choosing from, you know, me selling that same thing or, um, 800 other designers across the country selling that thing. And so for us, what we started to see was it felt kind of like this, um, price kind of grab, right? Like whoever's got that thing on sale because so many people are, you know, uh, offering the same thing, or it felt like, you know, we weren't really identifying ourselves as like, this is who we are. This is who Lindy Galloway shop is. It was like, this is, um, in the beginning, it was a little more like that because we were, uh, you know, maybe on kind of the first phase of people doing e-com. Um, but now that so many people have access over the last couple of years, now we kind of began to feel like we were just sort of like another fish in the sea. So we started to really assess, like, how do we differentiate ourselves? And so for me, And for us, that really came down to our own unique product. I've always had a passion for that. In our clients' homes, we design, um, I mean, at this point, probably like 50 to 75% of every home is custom pieces in it. Um, And so it was something that we already did. We already had a rhythm. We already knew how to do it. I love, you know, furniture dimensions and all of that. So it became... um, something where we realized we're like, let's, let's just offer this, um, you know, as part of our shop. So we have what we call our design by Lindy collection. Um, that is separate from like what we sell with vendors, which we still do. We curate it a bit more. So it's not like everything they, you know, everything, every vendor has is slapped on our website. We want it to feel really curated. Um, you know, for us, the goal is, uh, I talk to people all day long. They're like, I don't know how you do what you do. Um, And I'm like, I don't know how to do accounting. So I don't know how to do what you do. Um, (laughs) But but it's like, the point is that, you know, that's why people hire people is they, they, they want someone to say, Hey, here's what you need. Here's how you're going to do it. Here's how you do your accounting, Mm -hmm. you know? So what we can offer on our shop is say, Hey, there's a million options. We're here to funnel those down to the best things that fit our style that are going to, if you love us, you're going to love this. But now we're expanding out our design by Lindy collection. So as we expand that, we're going to be pulling back even more on, um, on our vendor selections, just because this is a thing that is going to set us apart because people can't create what we're going to be creating. And it's our own unique perspective. And I think that is where it is. That's where it's got to be like, what is your perspective with the shop? What is the unique thing that you're going to be doing? And I said in the beginning, I have two whys. So the first why was, um, for the nonprofit. Um, my, (laughs) my second why is evolving with all of this, the creative side, the creating furniture, the being able to offer something different to the world, um, than what everyone else can. But I had to arrive at that second why, because it turns out on giving Tuesday, no one purchases a darn thing. Uh, you got mm. Black Friday. Sales are through the roof. Giving Tuesday, which I'm sure everyone knows, is you know an opportunity for a lot of companies to sell that give back to something. And mm. it is, among a lot of companies, one of the drier days on this kind of wholesale season. And mm. um, it's fascinating because it's not you're not getting a discount. You're not getting a deal, right? It is literally you're buying something at maybe a small discount or full retail, but you're giving they're giving a portion away. And right. um, I remember being absolutely shocked. I'm like, why is the buyer behavior that they don't, you know, shop on this day? Right. And right. I, well, they, they do, but you know, it, I don't think that's the reason um, that they it's just are. just coincidence. It's what it's, you're saying. Yeah. I, I just, a lot. yeah, I think it's like, you know, someone might feel passionate, but I don't think that they have the passion that I have for that. I guess I would say, right. you know, it's like people right. love the story. I think that they feel more invested in their piece, knowing that it's also helping someone. But I also think that, um, that it also in some ways remains like something that we can be passionate about here that we can have in the blood and in everything that we do here in our studio and in our shop, that it's a part of our core, core value is generosity. And that comes with each other. And that comes also with giving away. And so for us, it became the why was something that we were like, you know what? We love that. This is a why that we have all the time because it doesn't take a sale or one moment during a year where it's like giving, you know, we're going to give back. It's like, we're going to, our why is going to be that we're always going to give back. But I still found it hilarious that like, <laughs> We have this whole thing, right? A whole campaign. We all companies have these whole campaigns for Giving Tuesday. Right. And 
It yeah. is, uh, it is definitely nowhere near successful as, um, as Black Friday. So I think being able to, to find your why. So my first why that still remains is that generosity piece. And the second why was who do I want to be in this world? Who do, what is my mark? What is my legacy? Um, and, uh, you know, I'm acting like the entire world would show up to my funeral and, um, be like, <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> which is highly not true. And, uh, the funny thing is everyone thinks I'm an extro- extrovert, but I'm very much an introvert. And I'm like, here's my four friends. Thank you very much. Um, so, so I have a small funeral, most likely. Um, but let's dream for a minute that I am leaving a legacy that is changing the world as we know it. Um, so, but you always have to look at it, right? Like, because if you're only going, I'm going to set up this shop because I want to make money and have a passive income. Like, is that really what's going to make? like wake you up? Is that really what's going to get you through the hustle? Is that really what's going to be the thing that you're going to get through when, you know, maybe there is a recession? Like, what is the meaning for you? And I think that's with every business. So don't just pick a business because you're like, oh, I want to make money. Honestly, quite frankly, you have no idea if it's going to make money. So find something that you're passionate about. The second reason, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So those are my two whys and um, I'm making life-changing funeral moments. So yeah. Well, it's, I I tell you what, it's fun and it's contagious. And the thing is, it really, it, I have to say, we, it seems like every other episode, I'm either saying, Hey, it goes back to relationships or, Mm -hmm. Hey, it goes back to establishing your mission, vision, and core values. Absolutely. This is the thing. And, and I said it on a podcast recently that in one of the outros that, it is one of the most striking similarities of the most highly successful people that I've interviewed in almost 900 interviews now. The ones that are at like the top 50 that are just objectively the most successful. Now, you can be a, an interior designer, you know, living in, you know, podunk wherever <laughs> yeah. and making yourself, your family, 50, 75, $100,000 a year. And you could be living your true success. 150% mm-hmm. I know that, right? Mm-hmm. Your own personal, but that's the thing. Even in that example, that designer has established their personal mission, vision, and values. And that is, I want to be able to raise my children. I want to be able to work 20 hours a week. I want to be able to contribute $50,000 to the family income or Mm $25,000 to the family income. And But the thing is, it does start with that. And literally, as you go up the ladder and the people that actually build the business that they want to build, whether it's Mm -hmm. big or small, it's because they've decided what it is first that is important to them. Yes. That's, that's the, the gosh darn truth of it. It's crazy. And nobody, I've not interviewed anybody. Look, I've done a lot of interviews. You sure have. A lot of people have been, you know, they've all taught us something. They've all been at different levels of their journey and where they come to the show, where they're on their, you know, where they're in, in a moment of um, difficulty and a moment mm-hmm. of challenge or a moment of, of reflection, like this was what I did great. But the thing is, there's a difference with someone that I speak with that they're literally sitting in their truth. They're yeah. like, this is yeah. how my business is. This is how I'd run it. This is why I run it this way. This is how I like it. And it doesn't matter what that business looks like on the other side. It's There's a difference between the person that is running the business that they envision. And Love that it. comes from having your mission, your vision, your values established. I mean, you're like, generosity is our core value. We're running mm-hmm. this through everything we do. Yeah. Like, that's a, that's a great thing. And, I, I, and you, know, you know what I know is, Lindy? When a leader like yourself that is so clear and so strong, Mm -hmm. you say little things that are the cue to me that it's a truth for you because, Mm -hmm. and here was your, your tell, right? You said, we believe in generosity in through, in way we go outside. But the word you said was, and amongst each other, like you Mm -hmm. said, whatever, if I go back and play it, it was like with each other too. It wasn't like, oh, I believe in being generous to the people that are less than me, you know, less, (laughs) less, less less, means than I do and giving them a chance to start a bit. No, you like Literally, it was so rolled right off your tongue. Hmm. Generosity with each other. Absolutely. And that's when a leader is running and living in their core values. That's awesome. Hmm. Like, Thank I love you. It. Thank yeah. you. I yeah. mean, I think every team, you know, we've expanded and grown our team a lot. And I think everybody... 
uh, there has to be, you know, these core things that they believe and that they have to. And we always say, we're like, Hey, this, you know, at onboarding, like, this is who we are. This is what we're about. Do you buy into this? Do you yeah. want to be a part of this? And that actually is, you know, develop some of the most amazing, you know, staff members that we have here because they believe in it too. And, you know, we always say, because let's be real, we're in a, you know, in our field, you know, I hear about all these different studios that have all this, you know, different drama. I grew up with three brothers and I am like, no drama. Thank you so much. Um, and so <laughs> I, I think feel- when you grew up with boys, you were much more like that. I'm the oh. same way. I'm like, stop, what are we doing here? <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm like, actually it turns out I don't care. Let's move on to something right. else, you know? <laughs> um, but I think that generosity piece, you know, giving people the the benefit of the doubt, like being generous with your time, being generous to each other is so important for cultivating the type of culture that you want within, within your company. And I love what you said about having, you know, your root and your base and your foundation of this is what I'm doing. This is my, what my truth is. And what Mm -hmm. I've discovered through friends is that friends in the industry and even outside the industry is that it's also okay if your truth changes, as long as you know what your truth is. And now I started the business with my first child in an ergo and, um, I'm bouncing him literally like there's job site, like (laughs) photos, um, that someone should have been very concerned about, um, that I did put on Instagram, (laughs) um, of me, like, you know, bouncing my kid, like while figuring out, you know, and I have, I have no, um, no background in design. I went to school for communications at a small private school. Um, so I was going in pretty blind. And so my first job was our house, you know, and I'm, I know no different than having kids at the same time, like literally starting my, my family and starting my business at the same time. So I don't know anything other than just managing chaos every single second of the day. But what I have found is that, you know, for me that my truth is just, is what we're creating here and what we're building and my creative innovation that I care so deeply about. But it's also okay if you go through a phase of life that you're like, gosh, my kids just need me right now. And my truth has to shift because of where I'm at, or, you know, I'm making a big life move. And so this has to shift or my vision has to tweak a little bit. But what I think is just being clear on that vision, every single step of the way is what's really important. You know, not only just revisiting it once a year in January, like we all do, which by the way, I'm so behind on my Peloton writing that I promised myself that I was going to do every day. (laughs) Um, But much like that, you know, it's like, this is something every six months you can look at. This is something you can get a business coach that can help you really look at what it's going to be and how it can evolve and shift. And the reality is you want your business, you know, if you want your business to grow and you want your, your business to evolve, you're going to have to evolve with it. I mean, yeah. what I was eight years ago is not what, you know, I am now and it's not what we're running now. And, um, but knowing that it's okay to like evolve and shift with that, um, I, and, but m- maintaining your core truth is, is really mm-hmm. important. Well, you know what? You're you're talking to the choir there on that one. I agree with you 100%. And as a matter of fact, you know, recently, um, I don't know, maybe a month or so, two months ago, whatever it was, Jean Stouffer was on the podcast oh, with me. Love her. Me. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Right? Oh, my goodness. And um, she literally, the theme of our conversation that day was seasons. Seasons mm-hmm. in your life. And the things that you do at one season are not the same. And you 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 come to your business in different, in, it, it, you know, it's, it's just... It's you're you're so right. It's okay to change exactly what you're doing and wh- mm. what the activities are, as long as you're still being true to you. And what her and I discussed was we we're very similar in the beginning. We had very very strict rules about what our business could expect from us when our mm. children were little. Yeah. It, you know, it was non-negotiables. We had similar ones, not, not all the same. It's not important, but the idea was that we were both the exact same about it. Mm. And it was like, you know what? I can build an empire at any point. And the truth is yeah. what we also learned was neither one of us had the desire. We never really thought like what our futures would be like. It was just like, mm. I want to be a businesswoman. Yeah. I have a brain in my head. This is, I have drive. <laughs> I have, I want, this is not, uh, I need something more than raising children, but mm-hmm. raising children is my priority during sure. this 20 year period. Yeah. And that's okay. And the, and you just trust that when that phase and that season is done, that the universe will open up and you'll, and we both have, it's like, we're both yeah. like, Oh my God, who would have thought we on. were doing Seriously? either of these things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You it's two so are fun. such a testament to that. And 
you know, what, what's that saying? I feel like there's, there's this piece, um, people, what's that word? Um, if you love what you're doing, you'll never work in a day. Is that what they call right, it? Right, 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 yeah. right. Can yes, we just like erase like that. that from the whiteboard? Like to <laughs> me, I'm like, who is teaching that? Um, what money are they collecting on this thing? Because the right. reality is when you go through those different seasons, there's going to be moments that maybe you're fired up and other moments where you're not as fired up. Yes. You may, yes. you know, be having a business and then have a kid that is going to alter things. And that is going to maybe change the way that you you know, yes. operate. And, and those adjustments can hit you hard. They too. can hit you so hard. Yeah. And you might yeah. go through, you know, personal things in your life and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And I think that like that is going to always have an effect on, on work. I mean, you just can't separate it. If you are no. who you are, if you are the creative, if you are those things there, especially as a creative, I mean, as an, as maybe an encouragement to people, like, I feel like people are like, Oh, you're always so creative. You're always, but there are, there have been moments, there have been seasons where creativity did not flow. And mm. I would sit in that room till midnight, 2am. And I'm like, that's so <laughs> weird because last year, 2am, I was on fire. And now <laughs> I am like, what is happening? Where is my creativity? And mm. that's normal. And those things will happen. And I think our ability to be even generous with ourselves to say, that's okay. You know, oh, what do I need right now? Actually, do I need a bubble bath? Maybe that's what I need. Do I need right. a good podcast? Maybe, maybe I need to read a book that will inspire me, but mm-hmm. there will always be days that feel like work. And if you know what your truth is, you're going to get through those days. I love that too. You know, there are, there's always days that feel like work because you can truly, truly love. I mean, we just listened to you and literally your passion is like screaming through the, the, the sound waves to us, right? Like it is, it's so intoxicating and it's Aww. so contagious, but that's like, see, this is the, you know, let's take the Instagram life. And put it in mm-hmm. real. There are days yeah. that feel like work for Lindy too. Days that like knock her <laughs> on her butt. And oh, yeah. days that, you know what I mean? So like, and that's, I love that um, admission there because, mm-hmm. you know, we do see people like yourself that we look up to and we see all of the things and the and the projects that you do and the followers on Instagram and the, you know, the, oh my goodness. And she has a charity too. Like for crying out loud, lady, come on. Like, you know, <laughs> right. And then you're like, oh, I'm standing still. Like I got to do more, you know, but you know, I'm having a tough day and Lindy probably doesn't have a tough day. It's like, no, 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 no. All humans here, all mm-hmm. humans here. Right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And in some ways there's more tough days than good days. And it's, you know, it's how you kind of ride through that, but absolutely. Yes. And that's, you know, the, the blessing, the curse of Instagram is that we all get to see what we do, but man, if you can just get behind, um, that screen and know what people, you know, are carrying, there's so much more that we're all carrying than just the business and, yes. and we're putting it out there, but that's not the whole truth. Right, right, right. No, I mean, that's the thing. So, oh my goodness, you are a love. I oh, like you're a so- love. <laughs> so fun. This was so fun. <laughs> it was. It was a lot of fun. And the thing is, we really only touched the surface here. So I appreciate your time. I love what the message that ended up coming out of our conversation today. But I kind of think you're going to have to come back. Oh, just I'll be you. back <laughs> in a heartbeat. Um, are we doing happy hour next time with it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I will come back anytime. Um, and thank you for guiding such a like wonderful conversation. My pleasure. Okay. Well, sweetie, thank you tons. And I really appreciate you, you sharing all of your wisdom with us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I loved being here. Okay. I'm like a broken record. I say to everybody, I could talk to you all day. (laughs) You think it's just that I could talk all day? I don't know. Um, but seriously, Lindy gets a gold star, right? Lindy is proof that knowing your why and living your truth make all the difference in your business and how it can catapult you to new places. All right. Are those places going to be challenging? Yes, of course they are. But that's also what makes it so amazing and beautiful, right? Knowing and understanding and giving meaning to our business is what makes it come to life. And that's when things get really fun. Lindy and I talked about a lot of things today, but there are a few things I want to circle back and make sure you understand because these are the things that stood out to me. First of all, Lindy said, if you're going to create a business, you need to have an angle. What is the 
hook, right? What is the hook? Why is this important to you? And why would it be necessary for others, namely your prospective clients? I mentioned Megan Moulton, and in that show, episode 677, you'll hear more about how focusing on your why can lend a hand in your success. And another interview that touched on this topic was with Laurel Smith, episode 545. Laurel discussed how she built her design brand around her passion for wellness. These are great shows to listen to if you need more help getting to that that elusive concept of what is my why, right? Now, we also discuss that your why can change. Your vision can change. Life is not stagnant. There are different seasons and all through the journey of us being business owners and the different seasons pull us in different directions. Gene Stofer and I chatted about this recently in episode 840. Recognizing and flowing with your current season and allowing yourself and your truth some grace can be very beneficial. Jean does a great job explaining how this affected her brand. So if you have not listened to the episode with Jean Stouffer yet, please run, don't walk, right? Now, another thing I want to point out is that when Lindy felt the nudge that pulled to do something good in the world, she really explored it, right? She didn't just sit there and say, hmm, I don't know what I could do, right? Now, I'm sure there are plenty of amazing charitable things that we can all do, and I hope we all do do our part. But sometimes the best thing we can do is utilize what we know and what we are good at and go from there. Success can be complicated and sometimes it's not as enjoyable as we think it will be. But Lindy took her success and created something meaningful out of it that serves her family, her community, and the communities around the world. So the thing is, it's okay to listen to your heart too, not just your brain. Give yourself permission to do this. Now, you heard the passion in Lindy's voice, and it is contagious, right? I hope that you got some of that out of today's conversation and are ready to think about these things and how they might coincide, align, cross-check with your business, right? Now, I'm not saying, for crying out loud, that everyone needs to go out and start a nonprofit or throw a charity ball. It can be small. Just think about what gives you meaning, right? And think about how you can bring that into your business model. That's all. It can be small. If you want to hear more about passion projects in the interior design world, I also encourage you to check out episode number 717 with Susan Winterstein, all about her nonprofit, Savvy Giving by Design. Okay. Now, if you want to support Lindy and Wynn's efforts in providing microloans to budding entrepreneurs in underserved communities, please check out their shop and her designs at lindygalloway.com. We will put the link in the show notes. Gorgeous classic pieces. Okay. And if this episode has inspired you to be more philanthropic in your own business, Yay, yay, yay. I encourage you to do your own research just as Lindy did and find a good fit for you. Giving back can be rewarding for both ourselves and for the people that we help, right? And it really does help us keep on point and keep our perspective and our whys and our own life present, right? I love learning about Lindy's passion and how her e-commerce shop came to be. She has so much more to share, and I'm excited to tell you that Lindy and I have a follow-up to this conversation over on Instagram Live. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and click the button to be notified when I go live, okay? Because when Lindy and I plan that, we're going to be talking about how Lindy has organically grown her social media following, which continues to be a top referral source and revenue driver for her business. Okay. She has more than 260,000 followers. And um, I know we just didn't get to that. And how can I leave that part of the conversation out? So this is my solution to that. We're going to do it actually on Instagram. All right. So thank you so much, Lindy, for this conversation. I appreciate you so much sharing all of this with us. I'm looking forward to having that time together on Instagram. And thank you too for showing up. I hope that you got something out of this. And I hope that if you did, you share it with a design bestie. All right. Thank you tons for listening today. Decide to be excellent.
Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day. Thank you.